Hello and good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to Discovering New Project RDB with Michael and myself, Alexander. Hi, welcome. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Hi, Alex. Good to see you. Hey, yeah, it's good. It's to good. See you. Uh, just came back from from skiing vacation with the with the kids, which was which nice. was great. And did you have uh, enough we, snow? Yeah, in the beginning it was very. Um, minimal <laughs> to say so uh, so <laughs> yeah. you were looking like over a green landscape and there was like only the uh the the, the ski the one, uh, area yeah. that had some s s snow uh <laughs> but when we when we left uh it was like snowstorm and, and and snowed a lot and actually now it's actually quite white and everything is full of snow again yeah it's, um, it's gotten cold, cold again yeah yeah and it was actually uh, not so much fun going back because our car our electric car that we had rented was more like a summer <laughs> car <than laughs> so it was quite an uh, yeah. uh, interesting uh ride back home yeah uh, did you have to but, stop a lot of times uh yeah it was kind of mostly getting out of the area right so if it snows very quickly a lot then you know you have all this um I see and 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 um, packed snow where they call them mm. just slides around and so that was uh, the least fun thing. But otherwise, yeah. it was good. Good week. We we uh, spent a week with some friends and we played a lot of games. So we played yeah. uh, Unstable Unicorns. We played uh, role play, the uh, Schwarzauge, like D and D, like uh, with yeah. the kids, which was really fun. Uh, we fought some ogres and. <laughs> then uh, Vampire <laughs> Queens and Munchkin and um, Llama and Skyjo and lots of other games. So we had a lot of fun um, with board games. So we had a big, <laughs> big pile of board games with us. That's good. That's um, good. I, I always... recently played Skyjo with with a couple of friends. Uh, mm -hmm. and it was it was it was good fun. I, I you know yeah. you introduced this game to me and uh, and I think to Alex as well. Another. Uh, yeah. friend colleague uh, and then he, he bought it and we, we played it the other week so that was that it's was really great. nice it's a quick yeah. uh, no-brainer game but it's always yeah. like good mix of i mean it's more luck than strategy i guess but it's, it's a, a little fun. yeah it's, it's it's a luck based game but it's and you it's, can complain uh, a lot that's usually yeah. really important <laughs> <to play more laughs> games. <laughs> right and 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 uh, we found a new uh game it's called here to slay that's from the same people that made uh, unstable unicorns and one of our friends bought it and we played it yesterday and it was really nice as well mm -hmm. so uh i can recommend that as well it's good i, I think at, at some point we need to do another uh, board game geek uh, data data exactly episode. i was exactly i was <laughs> thinking the same and actually something i thought about uh, when uh, thinking <clears throat> about like the rpg bits is perhaps you should do um should see if we find some data on skill trees for um for either video games or, or RPGs where you have like classes and their advancements and their skills and, and spells and so on. And it could be yeah. also an interesting one about optimizing uh, optimizing skill trees basically uh, as such mm -hmm. and, and kind of how can you kind of represent these uh, very nested and deep uh, trees of, of skills in, um, in a graph. And I remember on Discord, actually, I saw someone posting a question on graph visualization, and he had actually really beautiful skill tree rendering of an online game. I need to find this again. It was really, it was really beautiful graph visualization of the of that yeah. tree. Okay. <clears throat> I might have yeah. That. That, but board game episode take... uh, count me in uh, totally. Yeah. So we also capture all our playing data in um, BG Stats, like the mobile app for. Yeah board game recording and uh, so have a synced account across the family so we have all these <laughs> all these plays uh, yeah maybe that now. could be something and the kids uh, can make fun of us how how good they are and how bad we are <laughs> 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 at this so that's definitely, definitely a good yeah. one as well yeah <clears throat> That's cool. cool. Yeah. And uh, actually, I didn't realize when we talked before I left, uh, we, we talked about trying to do some better data in, in a graph. And actually, it's very fitting, right? So with all the like the snow and uh, oh, uh, yes. <clears throat> winter weather or climate change weather and, and, and so on. So I, I, f I f felt it was quite, quite fitting to, <laughs> to close the circle with uh, <laughs> yeah. being off and experiencing the weather to actually capturing it in, in a graph as such. And that's that's true. <clears throat> I seem to have a cool. throat this morning. All right. Um, cool. Before before we go into the actual data, I'll give the usual 
uh, rundown. Uh, I think by now everybody probably knows it, but but still just in case. Um, when you're new, um, obviously it would be great to see some comments, some feedback, uh, some either in the in the video comments on YouTube or live now in the chat, wherever you're watching this, uh, where there is a chat feature, obviously, so uh, on, on on Twitch, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or on Facebook, would be would be would be great to see um, some some of your comments. I see Eshwar in in the chat already, so uh, welcome Eshwar. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a quick quick recap of the uh, what's included in Neo4j already be free. Um, uh, and then the, the general overview is uh, or the rundown is as usual. <clears throat> so we pick a data set. Um, and again, if you have a data set that you, you found, you saw somewhere, maybe it's your own data you would like to share with us. But ideally, it's something publicly available that other people can also um, explore then afterwards. Then let us know. Give us a ping um, uh, on on any of the channels, really, um, and and we can have a look at that and explore it in the future. And then we we look at the data set. We we think about a couple of questions, maybe what what would be interesting um, to to analyze or to to visualize or you know to just find out uh, from this data set. Um, we work on a data model and then load and query the data into uh, into a graph database. Yeah. Um, and that's it. And uh, with Already be free. You get a free version of a database as a service offering, so a database in the cloud, graph database in the cloud. So with that, you you don't have to worry about all the you know installation, maintaining, whatever else. You just you just click a button and the, the instance is there for you. So you don't have to you don't have to fret about all all of the 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 boring uh, maintenance maintenance and and administrative stuff. Uh, and what you get is um, a little limitation, obviously. <clears throat> It's two hundred thousand nodes and four hundred thousand relationships, but with that you can you can do pretty much. You can go pretty far already, and uh, definitely use it as a test uh, environment, as a you know proof of concept almost to to get to get somewhere decent. And then when, once you once you're ready to to match, you know to graduate out of Aura free, I guess you can um, you can go with uh, stay with Aura. You can go uh, with the professional tier, which is which is starting I think at fifty fifty six or so dollars. Per month, so relatively, or sixty-five, something 65, under, sixty-five. Yeah, so it's not it's not so expensive. So the 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 the, the first tier is, is basically starting there, and then it goes up. So very easy to go up and, and down as well. So when you realize, okay, maybe you don't need as much, and you can go down again. So very flexible, and uh, you get the 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 new workspace in experience, which includes uh, browser, desktop, uh, sorry, not desktop, browser, Bloom, and data importer. Which makes it very easy now inside one window to get you know get your data in, model your data, import your data, and then work with it either in a visual way in Bloom or in a query way in browser. And it's free forever, and the link is in chat. Um, so very very uh, easy to get going. I didn't put a topic in because I wasn't quite sure if we do the weather tape topic today or if we do it some other time. Because you've been yeah. out, so I wasn't sure if you had the time to to do that or yeah, do just else. take do it live yeah. uh, and and see how far we get. <laughs> That's uh, usually uh, okay. our approach. <laughs> uh, just dive in and 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 see what we can do with that, as such. That sounds yeah. good. And um, um, always, uh, as always, you know, if you have questions, if you have anything while we're doing this live, just you know, let us know. Yep, exactly. And uh, just to. To spoil everyone, uh, so this is kind of the area. So it's not that high, but it's really close to where we are. So it's actually quite nice. Uh, so and I, you see now it's actually really snowy, and the, the trees yeah, actually no, have snow. Cool. So this was all green basically when we were there, like the, the trees yeah. and everything between the trees, and and only the. It's annoying when um, that happens, right? I mean, you you. Uh, yeah, when you're leaving, when it's uh, like this, then yeah, um, yeah. Uh, one thing I just remembered, Alex, is uh, probably also something that we should uh, bring up at the beginning more is um, we have our trainings coming up. And for those of you that want to learn more with hands-on uh, trainings, yeah, um, we have actually uh, upcoming training sessions coming here. This, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, from uh, our training from series. In uh, what and, is it? Two uh, weeks' time. Yeah. Yeah, three weeks, not so four far. and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah, we start. So we have we a number of sessions. Yeah. yeah, we have a number of sessions coming up. And um, 
so from that perspective, there's some some good stuff coming. We do an intro, Alex and I, and uh, I think the uh, graph data, the routing application is from Will, right? And then yeah. uh, Spring Data Linear for J for people building applications in a, in a Java environment. Uh, it's really that nice. And Garrett. then there is from it's Garrett. Media exactly. Cypher. It's uh, Adam's session. There's... Oh yeah, here in the middle, in immediate cipher yeah, yeah. So, so if you want to learn more or share with someone uh, who's uh, would like to take a training, send them uh, send them to the uh, events page, and then you can filter for training. And then there's this training series starting on the fifteenth of March. So I just wanted to not forget mentioning mentioning that. Yeah, cool. And uh, with that, uh, let's dive right in. Um, I'll start by creating an empty or RDB free instance. Uh, so sometimes we forgot to do this, uh, or I did it already, but today I thought I'd, I'll go through the process so everyone sees how, what it looks like. So I just hit create here. I have to yep. confirm <clears throat> that I saved this password. So I just press download and save this as an end file. Uh, and uh, then it starts uh, provisioning our database. And uh, this is this one, which is called instance01 at the beginning. And we can start by renaming this to weather. Uh, weather. Rename. And then it takes a few uh, minutes uh, for it to spin up. And while this is happening, we look into the weather bits and pieces. So um, actually, I, I saw, uh, I was reminded of the web, weather APIs because last week um, or the week before, uh, someone posted that Weather Machine, a new uh, API service for weather, uh, is launching. And this is the, the guys that built Hello Weather. And they built basically because they built all the backend work or put in the backend work uh, for their own application to combine lots of different weather services and weather APIs. Uh, they thought about making this API service also available for people. Uh, and that's like one month of free uh, usage of the API service and then from the end of uh, end of March it's for pay. And so I thought, oh, that's actually a nice thing uh, to try. So uh, I looked into this and they have basically an uh, endpoint that you can query and uh, you can add lots of different sources, right? So, and if you look at the endpoint, so they have a mock data endpoint, uh, which is basically looks like this. So you have an URL uh, with an API key and then latitude, longitude, and uh, mock source, and then you get something. Uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see this. Yeah. Um, uh, so you have the location, and then current temperature, uh, and uh, other uh, information like humidity, or precipitation, or visibility, wind, and wind bearing, wind speed. And then uh, it, it has like hourly data, and uh, so it has minutely data, which is like a lot of fine grained. Uh, especially uh, on uh, rain and, and snow and so on. And uh, then it has hourly data where it has all these points over time, uh, basically. Right. So and maybe so, maybe just just saying that Hello Weather is a is a weather app for yeah, mobile it's an, phones. Exactly, that's an that's a yeah. better app. Uh, so they um, are building this, and uh, I just saw some one of them posting on Mastodon about uh, opening up this API. So uh, then I looked into like these sources. So they have like, I don't know how many sources, 20 sources or so that you can in integrate, but most of them are yeah. actually paid um, paid sources. So you have to actually go there, pay for an account and get an API key. And then you can add this okay. reference for open weather here. Uh, if you want to say add, then you have to put in your API key. And um, then uh, you have to pay basically by usage, right? So you have like 1,000 free API calls for a weather API, and then you can uh, subscribe to them. Okay. Uh, which yeah. kind of all of this led me down into a rabbit hole. So I was looking for free API services as well. And so there are actually a number of, of free uh, API services, right? So there's weather API, there's Bright Sky, which is using uh, the German uh, weather uh, service, uh, the ah, DVD. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is quite nice, which you probably also will use today. Uh, but there are lots of other ones, right? So uh, like Open Meteo uh, is also a, a free service, uh, but the format is not so nice. So I tried it out, and the problem is with this format, it's uh, it's basically not, you don't get an entry per time slot, but you get all the time slots basically in a long list, and then you get a long list mm -hmm. of 
temperatures and then you get a long list of humidities and, and, and rainfalls. And so it's for our purposes, it's not so nice to work with. I mean, <laughs> we can do it uh, in Cypher by basically iterating over the time array and then extracting the same index from the, all the other arrays. So it works, uh, but it's not so nice and also not so nice to look at. So I thought perhaps you just go with Bright Sky for today because it's also more like demonstrating uh, what it would look like than actually doing something like real for it uh, with it, right? But if you're yeah. interested in this whole area of weather, it seems to be a very deep rabbit hole that you can go into, right? So there's yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot if, if of you detail. Have a, a subscription already running with some yeah. of these services, then it's it's perfect, I guess. Yeah. To to combine it um, um, together. Yeah, and something that, that I also didn't know is how many different pieces of data they have here, right? So if you look at this, uh, like from uh, from the Open Meteo uh, service. They don't have just temperature and and and, and dew point and, and things like that, but also like uh, rain, shower, snowfall, freezing level, cloud cover, uh, vapor pressure, wind directions from different <laughs> distances from the measurement point, temperature in different distances, soil okay. moisture, soil temperature. And then they have also kind of solar radiation levels. Then they also have... Uh, pressure wow. levels okay. and for each of those they have like hundreds of pieces as well right and then weather models which weather model is used for that and then like daily variables as well and so you see already this is kind of a massive amount of data if you want to tap into this and i think most people using weather data probably use it within uh, with a time series database because these are kind of like events yeah, but I wondered if we can model this in a, or what we can model in a graph that could be useful to, to look mm -hmm. at uh, as such, yeah. right? Um, so let's see how it goes, and then we take it, uh, we take it from there. But if you have suggestions or ideas what we can do, then uh, let's uh, look into that. So, and one other thing that we of course need is uh, latitude, longitude information uh, for for places, right? Yeah. And so I thought we can just Google for uh, um, world capitals and GPS coordinates, basically. And I found this Kaggle data set, uh, which basically has uh, like the countries of the world, 245 countries uh, with their capital, and then lat latitude, longitude, and uh, continent ah, perfect. Uh, information. Yeah. So let's start with good. this. And then we, we pick a few of these. Um, capitals and pull in some weather data and see what you can do in terms of uh, uh, integrating that into the graph and modeling that in, in a graph such. And then we see how far we get. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sounds good. That's very good. Yeah, cool. Super. Uh, so so we have our database running up and running now. I hope this is readable. Cool. Otherwise, it'd be interesting to, to hear in chat who, if anybody has their own weather station running. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, I yeah. mean I'm, I'm not meaning like the, the 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 big ones, but you know, I have, I, I know my dad is 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 very keen on on, on weather things, so he has mm. this little little computer thing on his on his desk, which is where it tells him outside uh, temperature, okay, inside yeah. temperature, forecast, uh, and stuff like that. So it it feeds the data. So I guess no, I don't know if you have something like this in your place. Uh, lots of people have this, so it's, I think it's could be yeah. interesting too. Yeah, it's it's yeah. interesting. And today you would actually kind of expect us to, that these uh, probably not the cheap ones, but uh, perhaps people build their own often out of a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I wonder if like for your local weather information or so that you can basically track, like similar to home automation, that you can basically keep uh, keep the data running and 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 get it from from there as such. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's working uh -huh. uh, pretty seamlessly with, with, with some of these tools. So I think if 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 this then that, I know you can build your automations based on let's say you have a smart, uh, smart home uh, with, with at at your place, and then you have like I don't know blinds or like a, a, yeah. a top over your over your terrace or something, uh, which is which is retraceable, and then you can say if if rain starts, then you know remove uh, the yeah. the closing yeah, so it's it's uh, yeah, yeah you're right so i think many of the home automation services either tap, tap into a public weather api for yeah. your location or they have just a local uh, weather sensor the forecast and and uh, predictions projections yeah. as such right? yeah. cool so we uh, got our uh, data from our database and uh, um 
uh, our API from our database, and now we can connect uh, to our Neo4j instance. And I probably pasted in the wrong password. So let me get this again. Downloads uh, better. Yeah, you got it. It's another. It's a good example of you know, save your password, save save that end file. Exactly. That's otherwise. Exactly. You, you see, it's much longer. So I copied something else accidentally. So, uh, and this opens because it's an empty database. It opens um, um, workspace uh, in the data importer tab. And we can start yeah. adding uh, CSV files and then modeling our graph and adding data. Uh, so we'll do this for the capitals of the world. And then we pull in the weather data with APOC uh, loading the JSON directly from the API. Cool. Right. So let's see. We have our CSV here from uh, from Kaggle, right, which I downloaded, uh, which yep. is these kind of few columns. And this should be pretty simple. So we have a basically a capital. Country, uh, sorry, city. For me, we call it just city. Right? And it has latitude, longitude, country code, and continent. So uh, we have a continent here, and uh, then map this. Uh, so we select uh, for the city. We use these, and perhaps the country code. We could extract the country. But it seems also that sometimes the country is null. Would you, would you say that we want to extract a country and then and then continue? Perhaps that's nicer to to do this. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. We say just uh, this is the name, uh, country name, and this is latitude and longitude. So for currently, uh, data importer does not yet support point uh, automatically. So we'll need to do this uh, later. Mm -hmm. Or we keep it just yeah. as separate uh, floating point values. And our ID properties are name for the city. Uh, then let's call this not continent, but country. So there should be only like a one to one relationship basically uh, between that's our country and country code. Uh, and as we see, that country code is sometimes null. We probably use the country name, connect them. Uh, so this is country name and country code, and we use the name. And this is basically in country or capital of, and, and then country yeah. is on a certain continent. And we use the same file and select the continent name as Let's attribute here, and uh, this country is on continent. Right? And this is our little data set uh, that we mapped. And we see now also we have mapped all these all these fields. And now we can use uh, the preview feature to preview the data import. And it should give us like the continents with their countries and cap their capitals. Right? So because you're only importing the capital, nice. There should be only simple relationships. There are some that are uh, more uh, connected with it? more than one country, like uh, Jerusalem, which is a split capital here. Ah, uh, I see. Like split capital, capital, like uh, in Cyprus. Yeah. yeah okay. And uh, so there might be some of those, but not too many. Okay, yeah. let's run the import. So it run imports the data pretty quickly. No errors, everything is good. And if you want to, you can also see what were the statements to create the constraints for the primary keys, for the unique keys, and yeah, to that's, import that's the data cool. here, right? which is really nice. Uh, if you want to uh, use this yourself, you can basically also replace this unwind uh, with a load CSV or file as node record, and then basically just uh, use the other Bits. So instead of the unwind, you would use load CSV, and then you keep can keep the, all the rest uh, to do it yourself. So and if you want to visualize the visually explore this graph, uh, we can do this here in Bloom, and we have uh, basically our city uh, where we can say uh, an icon for city 
I don't know, something like this. Yeah, uh, our continent. <laughs> Country, like maybe. Earth or something. Yeah. or something like that. Yeah, that's good. Um, where's, in, where's just the globe? Uh, globe. The globe. Yeah. Like a globe with a heart, right? So, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, country, you can just have a map or something like that. Map or something, yeah. Uh, just, well, the, yeah, this is good. <laughs> this is. Oh, no, that was the continent, sorry. Yeah, it was the continent, yeah. yeah uh, we want to keep the... So, and for country, we use um, map. We just use the treasure map. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, that's kind of the exploration with, with Bloom. And if you pick one of the uh, continents here, um, let's say we expand yeah, the this um, to yeah. continent. And then we can go from continent to all the countries, basically. Um, all right, so then we can explore this. And we could even say, uh, basically, how far um, or how are they connected? So if I pick two two countries like these and would say, uh, find the shortest path, then I can see, do they have a shortest path? Yes, via their uh, continent, right? So they're both in Europe. So, But if there's no connection, then it wouldn't show a shortest path between them. Yeah. But what we can do, uh, remember we did one episode on borders, uh, on country borders. So that's actually a data set that could be used. If you have country borders, then you can actually bring them together by bordering countries and then you can have distances and, 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 and things like that as well, right? So you can then basically also take, take this information to uh, extract uh, more additional uh, detail on, from that data, right? So because if you yeah. have the... Uh, if, the, if you have the GPS coordinates, then you can do distance and then you can do what's the closest other capital, for instance, or other city, and then you can do routing and, and, and things like that. Right. So now we have this uh, data in our in our database. And if you find out cities... But do, do, we, do we have now the lat and long values already in, in, in there or no? Yeah, it also imported them. Let's see. Uh, so we can also see it in, in, in Bloom. If you click one of those... Uh, um, Cities, then ah, you can we see okay, we have perfect. the yep. latent mm -hmm. long uh, value in there, so we can use it for the API. Yeah, cool. and we have the same if you, if you query the cities, then you see that uh, this has um, the latitude and longitude uh, information. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, so if you that, the, these values were, were good for us, we don't, didn't have to um, yeah. manipulate them or change them in any other form. Exactly. So, uh, so for instance, if we wanted to say now, um, we pick a city, uh, let's say, uh, name uh, Berlin or so, right? Uh, return C. This is Berlin, and it has these uh, locations. And then now we, now we could say, okay, uh, we can turn this latitude longitude into a point and into a location field. Uh, so we say, find our cities and set uh, C.location it's a point of uh, of two values. We basically take uh, just a city uh, latitude and longitude, and uh, that should create point values uh, as such. Mm -hmm. I think we can even pass in the city as as a whole or, or, or properties, and it just picks out the latitude and longitude information. Here. If I'm not mistaken, let's ah, let's try this thing. Oh yeah, so we don't okay. even have to do anything; it just does it automatically, which is quite nice. Is that a new feature? The no, I think it feature? always worked like this. It always picks out the the, the names basically, either X and mm -hmm. Y uh, and C. Uh, if you have like a uh, rectangular coordinate system, or for a polar coordinate system, it auto automatically put pick, picks out these names uh, yeah. from from data, so you can just pass in a map. And this map can have either only these two values or it picks these two values, uh, basically, mm -hmm. as such. All right. So now we can uh, basically re represent this information on, on a map, as such. So if you remember uh, our near dash episode where we also exactly. uh, showed yeah. maps of <clears throat> I was just thinking this. Uh, yeah. the European pipelines, uh, then we could do this. And now if you create an index, uh, create a point index. Um, city location for city uh, on c.location. 
So if I did a misspell, let's spell it, it created an index for us. And this index can now be used to do a uh, geodistance uh, operation. So for instance, if I find Berlin again, I can actually find other cities that are close to it, right? So I can basically say, find another city, uh, right? And then uh, where uh, point dot distance uh, of uh, c dot location comma c two dot location is less than let's say five, no, perhaps one thousand kilometers or something like that, right? Mm, it should be all let's say two thousand or something like that, right? So we can basically return c two and. No other cities around Berlin that I can't imagine. No, that can't be right. Oh, sorry, this, this is meters. Um, this is in meters. Uh, so four kilometers is probably too close. So we, yeah, that's a little bit too close. Kilometers. Yeah. Uh, so let's do uh, two thousand kilometers. So that's fifty, and one thousand kilometers is twenty-three. So you see Oslo, Vilnius. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, Bern, Bratislava. Yeah, a lot. Lots of cities. Zagreb. Right, Prague. So that's 1,000 kilometer distance, basically, from Berlin. Right. Yep. So, and for instance, we could uh, pick how many are these 23 nodes. We could pick these nodes. Perhaps we should start with Berlin, but we can pick these nodes later to patch weather data for them and then see if it's kind of uh, similar or how it's related as such. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if you take the Bright Sky API, we can get a weather. Uh, for a certain date. So for instance, we can get the weather for yesterday or something like that. Um, and then uh, pass in latitude and long longitude and then uh, get the data. And it looks like, like this. Uh, if you click on try here, uh, it gives us uh, the timestamp, uh, what weather station it was from and like a bunch of uh, uh, information here on, the, on that weather uh, as such. And I just click try. Let's see, it should play. Hmm. Let's see. For example, clear yeah, for example. Try. It, it used to show me the curl statement. Actually, let me load, load this again. Yeah. Um, okay, we just take this and then we do try schema example. Hmm. This is weird. Because last time I got an uh, <coughs> curl example for this one. Not sure why it doesn't do it now. Oh, there's a course issue. That's interesting because it just didn't. That ex that issue didn't exist. So let's see. Something is wrong. Hmm. hmm. <clears throat> okay, so that boycotts my. Uh, <laughs> so we probably need to put in to the um, URL to ourselves. So we just uh, put in Bright Sky API, and then we use uh, date, let, and lon, right? Uh, and weather. So we do just weather. Uh, date equals 2022.02.26 was yesterday. And let is, uh, let's just copy this for Berlin from our data. Uh, yes, Berlin, somewhere. Uh, so it's the cute. Yeah, I get the same, failed to fetch. Okay, let's see. I hope that the API itself <clears throat> works. Uh, if not, then we need to see. I'll take another one. Okay, uh, that's, I think this is the demo gods helping us. <laughs> uh, 
having some fun. So you see, uh, so this is what you do get as if you do live demos. Uh, we could try the current weather if that works. Uh, so it basically tried to get it, but it didn't work. And then there's current weather. Let's see if this works, but I guess that's also not working then. No. Okay, then uh, don't worry. We can just pick one of the other APIs. So we can actually take the one from um, Weather Machine. I mean, this is now mock data, but I think it should be fine, right? So if you yeah. put in the uh, the data from uh, for Berlin, uh, so the uh, first it's, I think, the latitude, let's see. This is always my main biggest problem in geo data is it, uh, uh, which one is which, right? Uh, yeah, so let's uh, see. 50T2 is, uh, I think it's exactly the other way around. Because negative 87 is uh, degrees. It says here, <clears throat> longitude is the negative. You see on the, the first two <clears throat> first two lines of the actual re response. So it oh, yeah. be... Oops, sorry. Um, so the negative is the longitude. Okay, yeah. then let's copy this from our uh this 13.4 is the negative exactly. So yeah. So this should give us hopefully. Let's see. This is, uh, I'm not sure if I can also pass in time zone. Uh, GMT, can I put in GMT also? Docs? <clears throat> I don't know. Did it change anything, right? Time zone. It's... I think it's because it's mock data, uh, but uh, let's not worry too much about this. Uh, let's just take the data and uh, uh, use it as such. Right? Um, so otherwise, we need to uh, add one of the data services uh, as such, and then we have to do subscribe first and then so on. Subscribe, yeah, that's... Uh, which takes too much time for now. Um, but um, from Near4j, what we can do here is uh, basically <coughs> take our uh, information and say, uh, call APOC uh, load JSON, and then we pass in our URL, and then we just put in our latitude and our longitude um, into the API. And then we say yield value, and we return uh, properties of city uh, as city, and then it had, um, where's my mouse here? It has uh, currently and hourly uh, data, right? So let's return this. Um, that's my EFJ there. Uh, return value dot currently and value dot hourly first entry or so. Yes. And, uh, what does it complain about yield value? Currently and Oh, hourly. Did I... As their summary and then data. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, here we do a value dot hourly dot data. Yep. So you see now our, our uh, currently within Y. Ah. Uh, Michael, I got it. Hmm? The bright sky is back on, but it's probably not too late now. 
No, it's okay. Uh, let's let's actually take the bright scat one. Thank you, Alex, for checking in the background. Uh, I uh, used. That's, I, that's... Yeah, I thought I used, but I didn't. I used the twenty twenty three date, and with the twenty twenty three date, it worked. Ah, okay. But even the twenty twenty two one. Thank you, yeah. uh, John. John for in, in chat. John uh, made made a comment, and I think oh, I thank you, John, for for saving our. A wrong parameter here. I tried it with. I thought I tried it with twenty twenty three, but then I got the same response. But then, the last date needs to go. It needs to go as well. And if you if you use twenty, I used twenty six of February twenty twenty three, and and remove the last date timestamp from the query testing, mm -hmm. then you get a response actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it actually also says that the uh, last date is actually optional, and you can yeah. uh, basically it just just does day plus one basically. Yeah, exactly. Oh, just I'm remove just that fast. Exactly. And, and pick us. So okay, then let's take this. It's a good thing I tried uh, again. <laughs> Thank you, John. Attitude. And now we need to just access the other uh, information. So we would say we could get weather itself, and then the first entry should be good enough for us uh, that we need, right? So we pick weather and then the, the first entry mm -hmm. uh, as such. So value dot weather zero as weather, right? So, and this is actually actual data now, right? So we yeah, see- that's much better. Um, it also has at the end uh, the, the station, uh, so uh, all the sources, but I'm not sure if you want to also pull in the source. So that could be interesting if you have like, yeah, no, as you can see here for Berlin, you have three or four different sources. Yeah. Um, some for historical data, some for current data, and but it's it's good to know where this is coming from for uh, data lineage and and mm -hmm. uh, accuracy, right? So you can then say, hey, this data came from these sources as such. Actually, we, perhaps we, we want to add these sources. Uh, let's let's do this. And uh, just uh, for human readability, we can probably use uh, just a station name or something like that uh, as such. So we can create another node for these stations and then yep. um, say this is from these. Does it actually say from which station it is in the? Uh, Fedback source IDs, does it say source? Here it's source ID, oh nice. So we can actually say our weather was from this source, basically. Can you see that? Uh, so it has this, let's go down again. Uh, so it has the source ID 6150, right? Ah, and then we have a source There, yeah, three down, uh, this one is, yeah, yeah exactly. This, yeah, this, yeah, this one, right. Berlin Tempelhof. Yeah. Cool, so we can actually get the sources from this and then uh, say which source uh, it is and how distant it is from our uh, from our measurement as such, so which is which is nice, right? Um, so if you uh, if you look at our model again, so how we would we model this, right? So we have uh, our our measurement, uh, we have these stations, right? Yeah, and we have our measurement here uh, or our uh, what what do you want to call it? Uh, don't know. Uh, uh, measure output. Uh, I don't know. Uh, fork. I know. Well, it's not a forecast. It's a current uh, reading. Uh, I don't uh, know. Just weather data. data. Yeah, weather data. Right. Exactly. Uh, it's probably. Uh, uh, it's actually measure. Call it. Yeah. We'll call it weather. Just do weather. Uh, I probably misspell or mistype this all the time. <laughs> but uh, let's see. <laughs> So um, the other thing that I wondered is, uh, should we actually add the day as an extra um, entry here so that it's basically, or actually perhaps we want to do like the day and this is not a measurement, but we do it that it's kind of the uh, day of the weather or something like that, right? Um, the relationship just weather uh, or something yep. like that, right? And then, uh, and the station would basically uh, be connected uh, on, and the station measured uh, this weather or something like that, right? Yeah. Should we try this uh, as a model, uh, as a simple model? And then we could actually connect these days with the next good. relationship or something like that, and then uh, also correlate the days uh, across. Uh, and then perhaps you can have like a date or something like that, or correlate them over their date as such, right? Yeah. No, so it means in the <clears throat> J now uh, we 
uh, here. Um, so it doesn't have the date information, so we need to take it from our own. So this is timestamp. Perhaps you can take the timestamp. Okay. It should have um, a date at the very top. Doesn't have a, a date. No, no, it's uh, this kind of fallback source IDs. So what do we? Okay. Uh, what do we want to do? But we, we want I mean, we create the date, right? I mean, in our, in our initial pull from the data, it's the date. We know the date. Uh, we say this is our day. Exactly, we know yeah. the date, but we can also just do. Uh, uh, oh, let's put this with c comma uh, values whether zero as weather and value dot stations. It's called stations, right? Sorry, it's called stations sources. Uh, sources, and then we basically just say, um, um, what do we do? Um, and first create the uh, station, all the stations, uh, where we just say, uh, the uh, station ID is uh, station.id and uh, on create set uh, start.name equals uh, what was it called? Um, station mm -hmm. underscore name. Other name. Right? Okay. Um, about all our stations that we just got from the request. And then we would create a uh, day node, basically, uh, where we say uh, date is uh, date of, uh, so this is actually ISO date here, that we got our, uh, our timestamp, basically. Right, so that's an ISO date. Yep. So we can just take this and say in near for j date of date time of uh, weather. Well, let me call this W. Then I don't have to type so much. Um, <laughs> uh, timestamp. Right, so this is our date, and then we can basically set uh, the plus equals, and then we can basically say which, which attributes you want to extract from here. So for instance, uh, pressure, uh, better. you want to have the pressure, uh, visibility is probably in meters or something like that, right? Probably. So what else do we have? Icon, it's probably a nice icon. Um, um, Indirection. Uh, yeah. Precipitation, <clears throat> which is a word that I always mispronounce. Mm -hmm. Condition. Uh, condition. Is it's a interesting. Action. Word description. Uh, <clears throat> viewpoint, uh, probably we don't need this. Uh, wind gust oh, speed. Temperature is good. probably important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, temperature. Wind speed and, is really good. And wind speed and uh, wind direction, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably okay. So I don't yeah. think we need gus, no. i.e. burn, right? And perhaps cloud cover that's could fine. be interesting as well, right? Yeah. So how cloudy it is. Yeah. Uh, perhaps yeah. a percentage, I think, right? That, uh, yeah. I would think so. So, and uh, so we get set all these things on the day. And of course we need to connect these points as well, right? So we basically say, um, uh, what did our model say? Uh, we had uh, that's the weather of the city, and then uh, the station measured this. Uh, okay. Uh, so we just create a city weather uh, weather. It's really not your word. <laughs> no. Uh, day. Actually, what we can do is actually can do it this way. Uh, so we can actually say 
this day is created in the context of the city. Uh, that's actually a nice feature of merge. Um, which is basically saying, uh, in the context of this city, uh, there's one day node with this with this state as such. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so if I have a different city, it would create a different day node because it's con connected through the relationship to this day with the date, basically, as such, which is quite nice. Yeah, okay. Right. That's good. And then uh, we also uh, merge uh, station. Oh, we, we have to find the station again uh, because uh, that's in station ID, I think, right? Uh, where was this station? Can you see that? Source ID. Uh, ID is w.sourceid, right? And then we basically connect the station to a shirt state. Right. So this should give us this information for Berlin. So let's let's try it. And it says station name is not defined because we had to say s dot station name. And we have to and work between merge and match. So sometimes Cypher has some things so we created six nodes two relationships uh why did it do six nodes we have one day node right with, with, yeah. with all our measurements a couple of right? stations so, i would say that's probably oh right uh, you're right uh, so there's one <clears throat> station templehof right so which is the one that we said was the measurement station but it also created yeah. the other station so you're right alex so these are the five other stations that were in the response as such good point we could also use some uh, JSON lookup uh, to find it in the response and only create the one station that we need, but I think um, that was uh, easier to do now. Yeah. Cool, and now we can do actually the same with the other European cities that we had in our list before. If you remember, we did the distance thing here, right? Um, yeah. So this is our C2, and so if you pick this uh, and uh, instead of just using Berlin here, actually, for uh, this C1 and this city, so we don't need to. Uh, ah, yeah. Don't need to change all our code down here, right? Close this tab here. So, okay. So we found our city Berlin. Or we can also call, call it just Berlin. Right? So, uh, or start, let's call it start, right? Start city is Berlin. Yep. We fetch another city, which is less than 1,000 kilometers apart uh, for this state. So we could even extract this as uh, uh, as an attribute or something like that, right? So if you wanted to say uh, date, say here uh, with uh, date, so this is actually the current date, right? So if I do just do a return uh, date, it should give us the, the current date. Actually, but you wanted to get yesterday, right? Um, we need yesterday, yeah. Uh, so this is actually a date um, minus uh, duration uh one day i think let's try if this works because time and date magic is always <laughs> yeah. interesting to play with right uh, uh p p d yeah so per uh, perfect yeah per period or duration is one day so you mm -hmm. can also say one week or something like that and would we'll do one week Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Well, one month, then it would be one month. So it is kind of time and date operations. Okay. Um, let's close this one and close this one. And uh, this is our uh, yesterday. Right? Yeah. 
And uh, if you add it here in the string, it just turns it into uh, the, the ISO date representation. And uh, then it should work. Let's see what it does. Okay, we do need to do it to a string date, but that's fine. Mm, file not found exception. Why does it have a file not found exception? Date equals this. That long. Hmm. Good question. Is it is maybe the latitude and longitude not the same? You know, uh, in bright sky than in um, no, it should in be our, the same. In our file. No. Hmm. Oh, no sources match your criteria. Oh, okay. So we, um, it doesn't like us. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't have data for this. Um, Maybe it is the latitude and longitude. Maybe the value is. I think it just latitude. doesn't have data stations for for that location. Uh, oh, but I it. think we added. I mean, if an... Bright Sky only has German Weather Service, then maybe it's. Does it have? I, I thought it should have Berlin international or... as well. Uh, but it could have that it doesn't have everything. Um, but uh, fail on error, we can pass in fail on error false and see if it would still work. Uh, so we can pass in a config here. Oops. Fail on error false. No, didn't like us. Uh, for whatever reason, it returns in weird error message here. Um, okay, then we uh, just uh, If, oh, uh, let's see, skip one limit. For whatever reason, doesn't like our other locations. Uh, you need ah, to, here. Uh, mm. I think it's this length and longitude. We have too many, too many decimals. You need to shorten off the, you know, to cut it off after the second decimal. So. I tried okay. just uh, Albania and it's 41.31. Mm. And if you cut off after the 3 1, then uh, it gives you a, uh, it comes with a response. If we can round, uh... we need to round down to two after the comma. Or we can do just use the round function then. Okay, let's try this uh, round. And round two. Right, so we just take uh, the two string date and round latitude and longitude uh, to, to this. Yep. And it still doesn't like us. But now it's a different error. Now it's the same. No, it's the same. Uh, but it seems to have gotten some of them, right? So um, at least if you now uh, look at days, uh, so we get got multiple days and yeah. more stations as well, right? So we have like now stations. Uh, maybe some of these cities are, maybe it's only Europe. Oh, I don't know. Luxembourg, uh, we have uh, SWN, Vaduz. Paris and, and, and so on. So there's some of these stations ex at least exist. And now we can basically say, okay, can we correlate them, right? So for instance, say weather, or if we say, uh, if we um, take, for instance, a condition and turn the condition into an, um, turn the condition into an, let me just save this real quick. 
Um, turn the condition into a node, for instance, right? So if ah, you, I see what you mean, like uh, snow or rain or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. So okay. if we take out days um, and say merge C condition uh, on uh, name is, and then we just say use day dot condition. Right? And then we connect the day basically. Uh, Probably not something I would do in real data because it gets too uh, too much. Uh, mm -hmm. right? uh, but um, for us to demonstrate, uh, it's actually perhaps uh, where not d dot condition is now. So now we have uh, basically dry and snow, and then we can see mm -hmm. basically which places have dry better and which places have snowy better, basically. Okay. Right. Yeah. And and similar to that, you can basically do things like, okay, can we aggregate over certain amounts of rainfall or certain mm -hmm. temperature ranges or something like that? And can we then kind of create an, an higher level graph of that correlates actually the the information into an, an higher level structure or something like that, right? And we say, okay, conceptually this is like spring weather or this is kind of winter weather and then extract this into into a series of like days of typical uh, weather patterns or so right so we could have something like a weather pattern and then basically a mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. series of snowy days followed by some rainy days is a certain weather pattern for instance and you can oh, yeah. identify these kind of patterns as such right so in, as i said before in the graph you would probably not store the um, the raw data like we did now but you would mm. basically extract these kind of patterns of data and then add them to the graph. So it would enrich your your, your graph of, let's say, you have uh, information on um, on suppliers or so, something like that in your in your graph, right? And and you want to basically see how does uh, supplier reliability correlate to weather patterns or something like that. Or if you want oh, yeah. to have, or if you have ag agricultural data. Or root, root uh, forecasting or something like this. Yeah. Uh, exactly, right. And yeah. and because Bright Sky also has all the historical data as well. Um, so uh, you can basically also access the historical data for many years back as well, right? So, so you can also look at past events that happened and uh, basically use that to uh, correlate your data into uh, into these kind of weather patterns as such, and then correlate yeah. other information to those, right? So, and you can say, okay, there's a uh, correlation, not a causation, not necessarily, but at, at least a correlation between um, certain weather patterns and certain other behavior, either in agriculture or in, in shipping and supply mm. chains or in um, in human behaviors like uh, what use of cars versus public public traffic happens. So if you think about there's like uh, public data sets on bike share usage or taxi usage or public transport usage and, and, oh, and yeah. so on. And so you can correlate it with that. So you can basically get a 360 degree um, representation of a, a city's activities or something like that, right? So and correlate that to the weather, for instance. And so that's something that we could do here. Yeah. Cool. So it was a little bit more uh, tricky today uh, with the API not working initially and then coming back. Uh, but thanks, uh, John, for, for letting us know. And now we yeah. got a, actually a nice uh, call DB schema visualization, a nice schema that has basically um, our geo information and then our uh, weather measurement with the stations and the conditions and we could extract other types of patterns basically as well and we can have days following each other for instance or aggregating to a month or something like that as well right so that could also be something that yeah uh, helps us yeah as well yeah and, and like you said i guess this is a, this is good example of how you would work uh, with other tools together in in, in this in this uh, in this way so let's say your your day might 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 go into a time series data where you will just feed it in, yeah. but then you you have uh, more advanced uh, and an analysis over over here at the at the graph database to you know, make some predictions, exactly. make some recommendations, make like say forecasts, uh, you know, across uh, routes and yeah. um, and stuff like that. Exactly. Cool. Cool. All right. Sounds I think that was, good. That was uh, very, very exciting, very interesting. Uh, I think uh, I just wanted yeah, to iterate. A little here. bit out of our <laughs> comfort zone. <laughs> a little bit out, out, of, out of the, a little bit, bit longer and a little bit more, more, more confusing. Well, not, not confusing, but a little bit more 
more tricky to get going. But uh, like Bjorn said here, uh, <clears throat> we learn a lot uh, from your troubleshooting as well. Uh, he, <laughs> That's he true. Was, he, was say, he was saying he's impressed uh, with the with uh, the different things uh, you're trying. Uh, so you, you got this. So a little encouragement as well. So thank you, thank you, Bjorn. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think that's true, right? I mean, we we um, you if you do it and if you struggle, then you you learn a lot uh, by by trying to get it get it to work. So exactly, and that's also the idea with the series, right? So it's not like a polished presentation that shows you like a happy path and everything works fine and uh, the, in the very first time. But it's kind of yeah. the same approach, like someone else would use, kind of where you do a little bit of modeling, a little bit of import, a little bit of data cleaning, a little bit of you know, going in the wrong direction and going back and then doing something different as well. So that's why we do this as well, is basically to show you how also, you know, change your path or change your model or approach it from a different perspective as well, or learn something by looking at the data, for instance, as well. No. All right. All righty. Cool. Uh, I think that brings us to the end. Uh, you already mentioned the training series. So if you're interested in, in learning more, uh, getting some hands-on yeah. uh, workshop uh, time, uh, in March, then uh, happy to have you join uh, one of the trainings. So that would be really, really good. And um, I think that's very, very oh, sorry, valuable and inter interesting uh, for, and have for everybody. And we coming as well, right? Exactly. And we have live streams coming. So tomorrow uh, I, I have invited Chad uh, Close and Zach Probst uh, from Intuit. And they will talk about infrastructure mapping uh, with Akamai endpoints, how to how to you know find out if uh, a company is at risk uh, through uh, software dependencies or software um, you know um, loopholes, I would say. So um, that could that should be interesting. Uh, it's happening tomorrow, and um, yeah, a little teaser. Next week, eighth uh, of March is uh, Women International Women's Day, and so we'll do. Uh, that's not not on there already. Still, it's 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 gonna be there later today. We do a live, a live uh, Neo4j live stream on with women in uh, women behind the graph. It's what it's called. So that's uh, Neo4j colleagues, women, female colleagues who work at Neo4j in various departments and talk about their um, cool. their job, their processes, like their their projects, and stuff like that. So that should be a fun, fun, uh, fun stream uh, next week, uh, as well as uh, another going meta episode is 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 for for or scheduled. So yeah, go to neo4j.com slash events yeah. uh, to keep up to date or follow. The, the online meetup group where everything goes as well, or in our community yeah. page, you see the events. Exactly, and if you have questions, come to our community and uh, ask them there, and we can help you answer them exactly. as well. Yeah, that's good. All right. Super, thank you uh, all. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, yes. All right, well, with this, uh, I'll wish you a great great rest of your day. Have a good, good start to the week, uh, or uh, if you're already finishing with your Monday, then I hope you had a great Monday. And uh, yeah, see you, see you around. Thank you all. Yep. Thank you, Michael. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.